have you ever got to go out on a farm and uh, hoe beets or weed and pick cherries or whatever, get a chance to work in that? This was the way I spent my youth. And uh, Dad had a, a little two-acre patch out back of the house. Now, the rest of the farm was work, but that two-acre was Dad's hobby. And he used to like to see what kind of a yield he could get on two acres with the very best of care. And he was reading the evening paper one night, and in it, it said that, that Utah State had developed a new hybrid sweet corn. It was exceptionally fine corn, and they would have a little seed available. And he turned to my, my mother and said, Stell, write the university and see if we can get enough seed for two acres. So mother wrote the university. Now, to go back in this story, that fall, we had entered a couple of calves in the stock show at the fair, and we'd fattened these calves and had them in there, and combed them and brushed them and perfumed them and clipped their ears and made them as pretty as we could and entered these calves. But what fascinated me was at the fair, there were some panoramic views of all the fresh vegetables and whatnot, and then on a big four by eight sheet of plywood, somebody had taken enough time to do glue down on that surface different seeds. And there was a mountain range, and it had snow-capped peaks, and there were all seeds, little tiny seeds glued on. The blue sky was up there, and then the fields of green, and little kernels of wheat and kernels of corn, and little peas and beans were glued down, make this beautiful thing. But up in the corners were two big clusters of Indian corn, and I had never seen Indian corn before. Brilliant, colorful stuff. We'd been to the county fair and saw this beautiful Indian corn. And the old man that was taking that display down gave me an ear of that corn. And all winter long, no television, no radio, I would get out that ear of corn and admire the beauty of that thing. After you'd milked the cows and fed the chickens and slopped the hogs. And then when I got word that Dad was going to plant his two acres into corn, I wasn't stupid. I knew that field was going to get the very, very best fertilizer. It was going to get the first turn at the water. It was going to be pampered all through the year. When Dad was planting that two acres in corn, I ran upstairs, I got out my ear of Indian corn, and I hushed off just a few kernels. And I went way on the outside edge, not in the field, but down the outside edge, next to the ditch bank. I planted just a few seeds here and there of my Indian corn. Well, that, that <laughs> summer, I didn't mind getting up early in the morning and going out there and weeding corn. I didn't mind taking all night turns to water and being out there all night watering that whole field. I had an investment in that corn, and I was interested. Late in the summer, I'm sitting in the barn milking the cow, and all of a sudden, out of the middle of that field, I hear, Bill! The old cow jumped. I sat up, what's wrong? Bill! Dad's in the middle of the patch of corn screaming. I dropped the milk bucket, and I ran to the center of that field. Dad had pulled back the husk to look at this beautiful yellow corn. And when he pulled back the husks and he looked, it wasn't yellow. That's what he saw. Bill, what did you do? Dad, I didn't do anything out here. I wasn't even out here, Dad. I didn't. Bill! I didn't, Dad. I didn't do anything out here. Bill! Dad! I planted a little bit way over on the edge of the field. But what I didn't realize, a little honeybee come willy-nilly flitting through the field and touched down on my ear of corn and then went back through the field and everywhere it visited, just for a few seconds, 
to change the yellow corn to something like that. Now, if a silly little honeybee completely changes the life of an ear of corn, what can a dedicated young man with real intent do in the life of one of his friends? Can you help a friend of yours change his life for the better? A honeybee does it. Can you do it? If you make it a matter of prayer, seek the blessings of the Lord in helping your friends to understand. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country to help other people at all times.